Wireframes are very important in the UI UX design process. And in this video, we're going to talk about why creating a wireframe in the first place, uh, how to create one efficiently, and uh, also I'm going to share with you some of the best uh, softwares, as well as uh, tips and tricks that I learned over the many years that I've been working as a UI UX designer for clients from all around the world. And uh, by the way, if you could click the link in the description, you're going to find uh, uh, many of the wireframes kits which I created, both for websites, uh, iOS apps, uh, and also for creating dashboards really, really fast. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, click the link in the description. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. So let's start talking about uh, wireframing. Now, the very first thing that uh, I want to talk about uh, is uh, the definition. And uh, one of the definitions which uh, I resonate the most uh, that I found online uh, is uh, wireframing is a way to design a website service uh, at the structural level. Now, I would also add that uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be a website, but it can also be an iOS app, an Android app, uh, a web app or some, or some sort. So this uh, can vary, but uh, essentially it's a way to design uh, the structural level of uh, your UI UX project. And uh, a wireframe is commonly used to lay out content and uh, functionality on a page which takes into account user needs uh, and user journeys. So we can create a wireframe not only for a single page or a set of pages, but we can create the wireframe in order to create and structure the entire flow. And essentially what a wireframe is, is a way for us to plan out the content ahead and really bridge the gap between the idea and the final visual design. Now, wireframing is a crucial stage in UI design. And uh, the reason being is that uh, it basically creates the entire structure of uh, the uh, of the screen or of the project. It's uh, like the plans that architects use in order to build a house. So imagine those uh, 2D plans, uh, which uh, you can see where you only see the outline of the house uh, and uh, you have a bird's eye perspective on the project. Wireframe uh, can, uh, can be um, interpreted in a similar way in uh, UI, UX uh, and uh, web design. So see it uh, um, like this. And a wireframe is much easier to adapt than a concept design too. And uh, this allows us to move agile and uh, really take the brainstorming uh, um, the, the brainstorming session and uh, the initial stage uh, to a much more flexible and uh, agile way of working because if you were to create the final UI design right away, um, it's going to take a quite quite a lot of effort in order to maybe completely rechange that page or restructure the elements in that page. But uh, <clears throat> while creating a wireframe, you can do that much more easily and uh, you can uh, get on the same page with uh, your client or even the team you're working with in a much faster and more efficient way. Now, wireframing takes place uh, early in the project life cycle, as uh, already previously mentioned, because uh, it's the structural part. So basically you're doing this uh, at uh, the early stage, uh, right after you already gathered some uh, uh, insightful data on uh, uh, the project, the scope, uh, the client needs, uh, the, their goals, uh, problems, and, and so on. And uh, we're going to, to discuss this uh, in uh, more detail in uh, just a moment. But um, for this um, for this stage, I really want to fo you to focus on the advantages of wireframing and uh, really realize how efficient it can be for your UI UX design workflow. One of the reasons that uh, wireframing is, uh, is so good is that it provides an early visual for the client. So I myself have uh, uh, been a UI UX designer for many, many years and uh, I worked uh, with uh, clients from all around the world and uh, currently I work 100% remotely and wireframes uh, essentially provides me a way for uh, showing to the client the, the, stru the structure and to have a green light for them, from them and even from me um, on, uh, um, on the project. So this is basically the stage uh, uh, just before the you know UI design and visual design, so we can uh, easily get on the same page uh, fast. 
Now, another great thing is that users can also review a prototype before it's live because you can create a wireframe and uh, if you really want to bring it to the next level, you can also create a, a live prototype and this can be something very simple, very quick, quick to make, but essentially creating connection points between uh, one wireframe and the other so that it seems like uh, it's, uh, it's a live app. Basically, when you, when you click on a button, maybe it redirects to another screen and uh, things of that nature. And this can really help uh, to show the idea to the users even before you build anything uh, in code and even before you build anything uh, visually. So this, this can be really uh, a great time saver uh, you can save a lot of uh, not also not, not only time but also energy and uh, and money in the process. So this is definitely something which uh, is really good. And again, as I mentioned uh, previously, it's faster to update, it's faster to change and restructure. And um, you can also fo you also focus on the content rather than the visuals. And uh, this is a big thing, especially if you're. Uh, new in um, in design, or maybe you have uh, you don't have a lot of experience. Uh, usually, at first, the junior designers tend to focus a lot on visuals rather than the content, and uh, this can really help out. And um, it can also help out with clients because they don't uh, get fixated on uh, things which uh, aren't uh, necessarily uh, relevant at this stage, at that stage. So. This is definitely something which is uh, really good, especially if you're creating a, a black and white wireframe where color doesn't get uh, in the way of uh, making a UX decision. This can really be uh, really helpful. And uh, again, it's uh, great for quick communication because you can create these wireframes quickly, you can get approvals quickly, and uh, also if quick changes are needed, uh, you can do it uh, faster at this stage rather than when you are in uh, the full visual design stage. Now, there, there are also some disadvantages and things that uh, you have to consider when uh, building a wireframe. And uh, the first one is that uh, it needs a clear project scope. So you really have to understand the context in which you're operating, the goals and uh, what you actually want uh, in the project. And, you know, sometimes clients approach me and uh, uh, they want to hop uh, on the wireframe stage, but the context is not clear enough and the project scope is not clear enough. So um, I kind of have to tell them, hey, we actually have to check those those boxes before we move, we move on to the next level, which is the wireframing. So this is something which uh, has to be taken in consideration. Now, um, the, another thing is that uh, there is a need to translate the wireframes uh, into a design, but um, this essentially it's, uh, um, it's a technical problem because uh, even though you have the wireframe, uh, you still have to kind of like recreate uh, a higher level wireframe into a UI design. And there's ways to kind of facilitate that, pro the, the, the process and make it uh, easier and smoother, but uh, usually it's uh, it's uh, one extra step uh, which uh, has to be taken in consideration and uh, yeah, so that's another thing. And uh, also extensive wireframe revisions can take time, but that's it's um, actually the same for UI design. And uh, the problem with UI design is that it uh, would take uh, even more time um, depending on the project, of course, but yeah, I mean, there, there really isn't uh, a way around it. It just depends on the project, the client, and how much revisions and updates uh, are needed to, to really make the project at, uh, uh, to take it at a, at a good level. Um, also, it's not always easy to fully grasp uh, the concept. Some wireframes need to be high fidelity, other ones can be done uh, in low fidelity. It really depends on the wireframe. And uh, an example of this could be a dashboard, uh, a complex dashboard for a financial company, which uh, um, can be quite uh, detailed and can have a lot of uh, uh, just uh, interactions and uh, UX elements in there compared to something like a pop-up. So it really depends on the project and, uh, based on, uh, and based on that you essentially elaborate if you need a high fidelity or a low fidelity wireframe. Now, wireframes should be used early in a project to get user and client approval on the layout of key pages and uh, the navigation. So essentially, um, 
in, in this is uh, just a recap of uh, what we already discussed so you know it's um, something that uh, can be really useful or doing a project and uh, you know you can get uh, um, approval approvals fast and essentially getting on the, the same page with the client uh, faster than uh, you would if uh, you just talk about the project uh, in uh, abstract or just textual terms. Now you might ask yourself, uh, okay, this is all good, but uh, how do I create a wireframe? Now the answer is uh, there's most multiple ways, but the first thing uh, is uh, uh, are you even at the stage where you need a wireframe yet? That's the the key question that you have to ask yourself. Because uh, prior to building uh, a wireframe, you have to understand the client, their goals, their pain points, their uh, business in general, and target market. And um, you can do that in a, multi in a variety of ways. Uh, I myself, I always like to do a general and uh, a UX audit. Uh, and um, usually I'll, I'd always have uh, a discovery call and uh, perhaps uh, a strategy call depending on on the project to really get uh, all of the context uh, elements and uh, really understand their goals uh, and uh, their pain points and uh, where they're, they're heading at, as well as you know their business in general, their competitors, their target market, things of that nature are essential to any UI UX design pro uh, pro project. So this uh, is uh, something which is uh, really important. And um, once you have uh, those uh, informations, um, one of the things that I like to do is to schedule a meeting with uh, the client uh, and uh, basically um, create uh, some uh, really rough uh, ideas on the spot. Uh, I usually use uh, Figma to, since it's easy for live co collaboration, but um, uh, it really depends on the project. Uh, sometimes there's a mix between uh, you know tools like uh, Trello, Google Docs. Uh, we might uh, exchange. Uh, emails, documents, and so on. So it really depends on uh, the client and uh, their personal needs. Also, another thing is uh, the wireframe process and the uh, communication with, uh, with the client. Uh, um, that, that changed, but um, essentially it's uh, uh, what we already discussed uh, um, so far. Now, something which is uh, really useful to consider is uh, the goals of that page and the flow, um, and also the problems that we want to solve or avoid in that page or flow. And uh, this is essential because uh, I usually created this uh, in order of hierarchy. So the very first goal might be X, the very secondary goal that we want to achieve is Y, and uh, uh, the further you go, it's Z, and this can go on and on and on. So it really depends on, on the project. It can be a very short list or a very long list, but essentially having these uh, uh, the goals and the, the problems that we want to solve uh, in our of hierarchy allows us to have a checklist in order to uh, see once the wireframe is built, if uh, we are accomplishing all of the goals in our the order of hierarchy and we're solving or avoiding all of the problems they want the user to uh to, to avoid essentially so this is a checklist to uh, for a healthy wireframe which um, i usually like to go through and uh, it's proven to be really, really useful um, no matter how small or how large the project is uh, this works for small startups and also for very large companies with thousands of, of employees. So it's, um, it's just something which uh, works and it's a uh, uh, good practice. Now, when it comes to wireframe tools, there's uh, essentially two ways you can go for it. The first one is uh, pen and paper. And uh, this is great for fast ideas, not ideal for complex UX wireframes or something which is very elaborate and that you're going to do long term. Um, the way I like to go for is um, by using digital. So all of the, especially the high fidelity wireframes and uh, even quick wireframes, I would uh, use Figma, but um, the tool doesn't really matter. You can also use uh, Balsamic, uh, Sketch, Adobe XD, Axure, and there's many other wireframe tools out there. Um, I like to use Figma because it's um, easy to collaborate remotely. And uh, since I work 100% uh, remotely, that's um, the uh, the workflow for me is a priority with uh, clients. I want clients to 
basically um, work with me in a very easy way and effortless way. So that's the reason why I'm using it. But um, you can go, you can do the same also with Adobe XD and, uh, and the other one. So it's not a big deal. Um, in conclusion, wireframes enable you to work agile and more efficiently. And uh, there's an hour to it. Uh, you're going to get a feeling of uh, how um, often and uh, how in-depth you have to go with uh, wireframes and it really depends on the client, but you're going to take up uh, all of the nuances with time. And uh, until then, you know, just uh, keep it in mind as a very important part of uh, your UI, UX, uh, web design uh, process. And uh, yeah. So I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, uh, please leave a thumbs up. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Also, if you have any questions regarding wireframing or UI UX design in general, feel free to leave uh, a comment below. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, um, subscribe because um, in my channel, I have over 200 videos on uh, UI UX design, software tutorials, and also videos in which I talk uh, about the business side uh, of uh, being uh, a freelance designer and uh, also anything in between really. So if you enjoyed this video, again, leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.